Hey guys, it's Robin, R. Silent Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. I recently showed you these little stockings that I made for ornaments as tuck-in gifts to go inside of any orders in my art fire shop from now until I run out. These are stockings I had made a couple years ago. I don't really quite remember exactly where I got the pattern from or the outline for the stocking, but I'm going to show you different ways to go ahead and find what you need so you can make stockings that you like. So we're going to make ornaments like this. They are fully lined all the way down to the toe, although we don't need to if we don't want to. I'll talk about that later on also. It has a little hanger on the side. I did figure out where to put the hanger so that it hangs off of it and you can stitch it right in, or you can just do it and attach it on the side with a button like I did with any of these. So to start for this, you're gonna need to have your fabric. We're gonna need outer fabric and lining fabric, and you're gonna need a pattern for your stocking. Now you don't have to make it in Christmas fabric. I have all different types of Christmas fabric here, but if you have, oh, Harry Potter is always big with the kids. So if you have some Harry Potter fabric or unicorns are really big right now, so you can use unicorns for your kids and you can make these stockings in any size from the little tiny mini ones all the way up to large enough to stuff and hang on your fireplace for your kids. Now I do tend to use a different pattern and a way to sew them together when I make the larger stockings. What I'm gonna show you today, I like to use just for these small ones and it works out really well, but it can easily be adapted to a larger stocking. Now these stockings are just your outer fabric and your lining fabric. There's no stabilizer, there's, there's no batting in it, there's nothing like that, no interfacing, it's just plain fabric. So these are very easy. I was thinking something like this you could easily put into the mailbox and mail in a Christmas card. I don't know what your rules are in the country you live in, but here in the US, that if your Christmas card can fit through and it's less than a quarter inch thick, then you can go ahead and mail it just for the regular price of a postage stamp. I picked this up on Etsy somewhere. I'll see if I can link it down below for you guys, but this is just a quarter inch wide and it shows me after I make an envelope, if I can just mail it as a regular Christmas card or a standard envelope, or if I have to upgrade it. So if it fits through here, they have a larger, fancier one at the post office, but this one is just one of those ones that they print off from the plastic, so that works really well. So that's why I was thinking that you could put this through. You might wanna skip out on any buttons and beads and ornaments and decorations because it can get hooked up. So especially ones like this because of the way I stitched it on. If it's stitched on right here flat, if your post office guy goes like this and it doesn't go smoothly, now of course it will be in a Christmas card, so it's gonna help anything lay down flat. But I think if you wanna put these as a little tuck in for a Christmas card, that it's a good idea to just not adorn them with any type of decorations. But if you're giving them out for your kids at school, the teachers, for the office and things like that, go ahead and decorate these all the way up that you want or just leave them quick and plain. Now the other thing you'll need is a pattern to draw your stocking. The ones we're using today, I found these at, I'll put a link down below, but they're at Orange Betty, orangebetty.com. She has them in a variety of sizes. She's got the little stocking, the teeny weeny stocking, and then she has a larger mini Christmas stocking. This one was the teeny weeny stocking. And then I made some using the mini Christmas stocking with an added cuff. Now she has all the written directions there to do this. This blog is not where I found this pattern because I know I did not make any of these last year. I believe I made them in 2017. It, it is possible if I made them last year, but I know wherever I got these from, it didn't have all the different sizes. But she has different ways that you can do it where you can add a cuff or you can just make a straight up stocking. Today, we are gonna make just a straight up stocking. You can also go and just type in an outline for a Christmas stocking and it'll come out in different sizes that you can print them. So if you want a different shape to it, you can go ahead and have this. Most of these are for paper crafts. So like this came four to a page, this was two, and I believe this just had one on the page. But you can, remember your toes can go either direction. This is just your template. You can flip it either way. I just happened to cut out one that did not match. So it's whatever, it's okay. And then so can she also has these little chunky monkey stockings that I've been calling them. She has little pieces that you can put for the cuff also, but I tend to just write down what size the cuff is on here so I don't have to save that extra piece. 
and hers also come with the little places where you can put a heel applique and a toe applique. But we're just gonna go straight and simple, but you can take the way that I'm gonna sew this together and use it for any shape and any style stocking you want. If you just wanna make the ones with the little paw print for the kit, for your puppy and your kitties and stuff like that. You can make any size, but if you wanna just go to the Orange Betty site, as I said, she has three different sizes right here. So it's pretty much gonna take care of anything you want. If you wanna have it a little bit larger so that you can tuck in some candies and stuff, or if you just want a little small mini one to hang on the Christmas tree, and the one in the middle, you can put some candy canes. And this one, let's see, will it hold a gift card? You could be able to put a gift card in here if you put it in sideways, and it was just a gift card and not the big cardboard and everything that comes with it. Once again, fully lined, it's got the hanger. You can have them so that they hang any way, which what direction you'd like. All right, let's get to the actual sewing and the tutorial and figure out how to make these stockings. They are so quick and easy. Today, I'm gonna to go ahead and use the mini Christmas stocking in a little stocking size. I have some of my leftover Christmas fabric. When it comes to the holiday fabric, I tend not to chop it up and put it into my scrap bins as I would with regular fabric because I don't have a lot of holiday fabric and it's nice just to have little bits because you never know when you're just gonna need a little bit of a chunk to go ahead and use for something. Now, if you're using, so you have a fat quarter of Christmas fabric, what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and turn it so that it's right sides together. That way, when we cut it out, if we have our two pieces that are right sides together, when we open it up, we will have a left facing toe and a right facing toe. Cause that's very important because if you don't have them, when you go to put them together, your toes are gonna be a little bit, you know, it won't work. So we wanna make sure that we have them right face together or as we're tracing them, if we're doing them on scraps like this, we wanna make sure we trace it on one side and then flip it over and trace it on the other. If you have directional fabric, you wanna make sure you put it somewhere that so that everything is going in the way you want. This is just a whole bunch of Santa hats that are going all over the place, so I'm not too worried about it. I just wanna use the best section of my fabric that I can to save on fabric for another project. I just have a regular ballpoint pen that I'm just gonna trace around it. If you're doing them right sides together, after you trace around it, you might wanna pin them to hold them together so while you're cutting them out, they don't shift. And then I flipped it over, so that way I know I'm getting a toe going in either direction. Now I just took my paper that I printed out of the printer and I took a glue stick and I glued it to some file folders. And that just gives me that sturdier bit of paper plus it also it saves the template i don't have to write any of this stuff down usually when i glue it i make sure i glue around all the edges really well and the paper tends to stay on there no problem i've had templates like this for years and they don't come off so it keeps any information they have it tells me how many to cut out if i want to do a cuff i wrote the measurements down for that and it gives me the website so i can go back if i need to see the directions or just to let you guys know where i got it from so I'm just gonna give this a rough cut out. I will save any of the pieces that I cut off that are of a decent size, just to use for another project because they work out really well for like little string projects and stuff like that. This just gets rid of that extra that I don't have to hold on to. Now, if you were only planning on making a couple of these, you could go ahead and take your paper template, put your fabrics right sides together, pin your template through it, and then just cut around the template and you won't even have to trace it at all. So whatever stocking pattern you decided to use for your outer fabric, you wanna go ahead and make the same exact one for your liner. Once again, if you're using any type of a print, this is not a, this is a semi-solid. Uh, can you kind of see? No, it has these little flowers all over it. 
There you go. See how it has it's a white on white, tone on tone. It has flowers all over it. So I thought that would be fine on the inside. I just used a simple muslin on all of these. It's You're just the inside of a tiny little ornament. You don't have to use anything really fancy in there. If you're making one of these little small ones, it can get a little bit harder to get your stocking to lay nice and flat on the inside. We're gonna trim off an excess seam allowance and all that, but sometimes you can still feel there's a little bunchy fabric on the inside. If you're just gonna use this for an ornament and you don't plan on putting anything in it, all you really need to do is have this rectangle so that when you look on the inside that you can see that it has something in it. So you can just trace it to this point and then you're gonna, when you go to do the stocking and we stitch it all together, you'll, you'll be stitching across the bottom versus following all the way around. And that's just gonna save you having too much excess in there. I did use the extra lining in there. I went all the way through just in case I wanna put a candy cane in there or something like that to hang it on the tree. I do have a little piece of scrap ribbon. This just happens to be the size that I have left. You can fold your ribbon in half and see if it's going to be long enough to hang off of a tree if you want a large one, or you can just use a smaller one if you just wanna have a little bit like this. If you wanna use these for an advent calendar and hang them up on some twine or something like that, you might not need to have a full loop. So whatever you happen to have, this is the length I have. It just happens to be a little over five inches. So when I fold it in half, of course, it's gonna be about two and a half, probably two once I put it in the seam and everything like that. So whatever size ribbon is gonna work for the size stocking you're using and the purpose it is, you can make a fabric one if you're making a larger stocking to hang over the mantle and stuff like that, or just a little quick ribbon for these ornaments. I've used Rick Rack in the past for some of my smaller ornaments also. As I said, it's just whatever you happen to have on hand is gonna work fine. Now to stitch our little stockings, I start by laying them down so I have the left going to the left and the right going to the right. And these are my outer fabrics. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with my liner. Now with mine, I need to watch to make sure that I have it. So we're gonna put them right sides together. So you're gonna to wanna to have, so that their toes are going in the same direction and that everything matches up. We're gonna take it to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch across here. You can use a quarter inch. I'm gonna go ahead and use a three eighths because when I stitch along the sides, I'm gonna use that same stitch. Whatever your machine happens to be doing at the time, I usually leave it at about a 2.4 for my machine, my stitch length. And then I just, this doesn't need to be really super tight. It's not, it's not something that they're gonna be putting on their feet and it's gonna be tugged on and pulled on a lot. So while it does need to be sturdy, I don't need to have those itty bitty tiny stitches. So I'm gonna go take it over and I'm gonna stitch across there. Gone ahead and stitched across the top and then I gave it a nice good pressing and I pressed the seams open. Everything just seems to lay nice and flat that way when you press it open, it cuts back a little bit on the bulk. I did add my little tying ribbon here. I just went and stitched it just an eighth of an inch into the seam alones. Cut off the goofy threads. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our stockings and we're gonna lay them right sides together and we're gonna make sure that the outer fabrics match and that the lining fabrics match. I do like to add pins to mine, so I just line everything up nicely. I wanna pin through my ribbon. Trying to break the habit of putting a pin in my mouth. I'm doing really good at not doing that anymore because it's so dangerous. You don't want to accidentally swallow it or have any issues like that. Now, depending on your confidence level when you're stitching, you can go ahead and put pins all the way down and around. If you feel comfortable doing that, I just put one in the, the heel. You could probably do it without pins. I just don't want to worry about anything shifting. I'm not normally a mad crazy pinner, but for some projects, I find it just works out better to put some pins in it to be safe than I have to worry about taking things apart and redoing them. If it were a larger stocking, I would probably pin a little bit more because of course you've got more real estate to deal with. 
Now I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to leave a little space for turning it inside out here. We're gonna stitch all the way around everywhere. So I'm gonna leave a turning spot, just a couple fingers wide. This isn't heavy duty fabric. We don't need to do, we're not pulling a lot of bulk through if we had batting and such like that in it. So I'm gonna go all the way around my curves. I'm gonna do about a 3 8 inch. You can do a quarter inch, but I say this to you guys a lot that if they tell you to do it at a half an inch and then just trim it down to a quarter inch, I usually just do a quarter inch, but that's when we're dealing with bags that are like squares and rectangles. With all these different curves and the two layers, I do like to go with the larger stitch. So take that into account when you're making your stocking. If you want it specifically to fit a certain gift or a gift card, you might want to go a little bit larger because we are going to lose quite a bit in our seam allowance here because if we're taking almost a half an inch on each side, you're gonna lose an inch of fabric, right? So I stitch all the way around and just leave that one spot for turning. I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with my normal stitch length. I've got it still set at 2.4. And you're just gonna use the width of my presser foot to just go round and round and round. I did, like I said, I did try it with a quarter inch, but I found that some of the parts on the back side were the the, the line had shifted a little bit. I was more down to an eighth of an inch of a seam allowance versus a quarter. And if I want to trim it to that, that's fine, but I don't want to start out that way just in case anything frays. So everything's been stitched around. You can see I did the thing where I start off the edge and come in, stitch all the way around and go back off the edge to make it easier to fold that under. I did use a white thread, so it is a little bit tough to see. But there you can see it on here and I trimmed it all, I stitched it all the way around. Now because these are curves and we want everything to have a nice smooth flow to it, we're gonna go ahead and have to trim up our seam allowances. Now you can go ahead and use pinking shears and just take that down a little to quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch. And these pinking shears, because it has all those little grooves that it cuts out of it, it's going to allow the fabric to stretch a little and lay flat. But if you don't have pink and shears, you can just take something with any type of scissors that have a nice sharp point. Now, you want to cut up close to the line, but you don't want to cut at all the way to the line because then you'll cut your line. And I just put little snips all the way through like this. If you want, you can trim off some of your seam first. So this, your toe is the one you're definitely gonna wanna watch not having too much seam allowance on because that's the one that adds that extra bulk on the inside of your stocking. Now for a larger stocking, I would just go ahead and I would stitch a larger seam allowance on the inside to make it so that the toe will lay flat inside the stocking. I tried that with these and it's just, it makes it just a little bit, depends on what you're going to put in them or not, because it just makes it a little bit narrow. I'm going to cut the extra bit of my hanging ribbon off. So whichever ones you, you were working with, pinking shears or the regular scissors, just go ahead and just make it so that everything's going to lay nice and flat when you trim it all, when you turn it right side out. Now last year I made a hexagon of star ornament and it must have been very, very popular because YouTube has been showing it to a lot of people this year. So if you found me because of that video, welcome to our little community here. We're so happy to have you. You can pink all the way around your ornament or you can just pink a little bit. You can clip your curves, whichever is gonna work for you and whichever tools you happen to have. But I'm going to put a link up in the iCard to that hexagon ornament for anyone who's missed it or just for the people who saw it last year and just wants to remember it and do it again this year. Now I keep some turny outie tools that I like to use for turning small things like this. If you have any other device or any type of a tube turner or thing like that that you use, that's great. I have a pair of hemostats that I've had forever. And I just kind of wiggle it into my seam down here in my lining, my little opening. And I pull out one toe. Then I go back up and I pull out the other toe.
Now I do like to give my outer toe a little bit of a press. That's a funny looking stocking before I put my lining and squish it in there. So I just have a plastic crochet hook. I also have a metal one if I wanna get a little bit of a tighter corner. Sometimes this large one is just a little bit too large, so I might use it to just poke it out to start with. You can use some blunt scissors if that's what you have. And a pencil that's not too sharp because you don't want to pop it through any of your seams. I'm not too worried about the lining because it's going to get turned inside out. But if I want to smooth out, I can take the rounded part of my crochet hook, just run it along any of those seams. Just make them nice and smooth without popping my seam and my threads through. Then I'm going to take this over to my iron and give it a good press. If we hadn't have trimmed our corners, you would get a lot of little pleats and wrinkles here. You can almost see a little bit on how it wants to wrinkle, but once I go ahead and hit it with the iron, that's gonna straighten that right out. I gave it a nice good press, so everything's looking nice and flat, and you can see it's all nice and smooth through there now. It does no wrinkles. Now, before we go ahead and put our lining back into the regular part of our stocking, we need to deal with this hole. You can go ahead and use some of that fusible tape in there. You can hand stitch it. For a little ornament like this, I'm just gonna take it to my sewing machine. I'll give it a little bit of a press here, and then I'm just gonna stitch along that line. Now, do you see how stitching off to the outside it just kind of makes everything just line up nicely in there. I used to have a problem where part of it would dip in and then you know you could see where it was where I turned it because it would dip in. But having it go off like that and it just lines up nicely. So I can just go ahead and take it. Let's see, you see how it lines up a nice straight line there. I'll use a little bit of a barely an eighth of an inch, just stitch along that seam, do a little back stitching before and afterwards and then we'll be able to flip our stocking. There it is, all stitched up. You can see how close I got to the edge. Now, knowing that I was using a white lining, I went ahead and stitched my entire stocking with a white thread so that I can go easily back and not have to change my thread. If, as you can see, you're really not gonna see any of your stitches coming through here. It's not something that's going to be used like a bag or like I said, something they're gonna put on their hands or their feet where it could stretch the seam. So I would, if I were using black linings, blue linings, green linings. I would just go ahead and sew the entire stocking with whatever color my lining is so that when I get to this step, I don't have to worry about changing my thread. Now that's just pure, I just don't like changing my thread all the time. It's not necessarily laziness. It's just having to stop to do that. It just annoys me. So I try to match it to whatever I'm gonna use at the end. You can stitch it all in a neutral color or any color you choose. Now the hardest part for me is to get this lining back inside of here just mostly because it's a small stocking. You just kind of tuck it in. I can't really fit, I mean, I can fit my finger in there, but it does kind of become a bit of a struggle. I just kind of push it down with my finger, find my heel. My most important thought is that I wanna make sure that the top, that my lining is not sticking outside of my stocking. This is where I could take any of my tools and I can just kind of push it down, follow along that seam and just get everybody to go in the right direction. Because if you have, if you have your, your seam from your outside stocking on this side and your, your lining seam ends up on the same side, I think that's where most of that extra bulk comes from. So you could take it over and give it another good press. I never stitch around the top. I mean, I would in a regular stocking, but this is so small. I mean, you can get it through the, the, the you'd have to put it through your sewing machine like this, and you can do it if you felt that it was very important. I have my little hanger hanging. It's coming out of the inside like that, so this can hang in any directions off of your tree. It's gonna look good from both sides. And here's what the differences are in the sizes. They're just a little bit different, maybe about a half an inch to an inch. And about three quarters of an inch in the size difference. So it all depends, like I said, what you're gonna use it for. You can use these, 
You can put people's names on it or just put a little tag on it with their name and use it as a present topper, a gift topper. So everyone will have a gift with their name on it, but they'll also get a stocking that year, a new Christmas ornament, I should say. But you just look around. You can find any size stocking on the web and you can also resize it on your printer if you want to because printers can go up to whatever percent whatever you can print on your home printer so if you want to go ahead and take it from a hundred percent printing like we always say always make sure you have it at a hundred percent and not fit the page and stuff like that you can go ahead and shrink it down 75 percent 50 percent depending on how small you want it if you have a little small mini tree you can make these really small for those, if you're going to make it really tiny, you might want to just go ahead and use your outside fabric, kind of tuck in a little hem on the top, and then just stitch it closed like this with your hanger in it. Because if you just have a little tiny one like that, you don't need to have a lining because at that point you're just using it as an ornament. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. And for those of you that are interested in watching how the cuff is added on, for I'll have this up this weekend for my patrons. As soon as I'm done with this video, I'm going to go ahead and make one to show you guys how to add the cuff. But for anyone who's not a patron, remember that this is on the Orange Betty site. She does have it with the cuff and shows you how to do it. I'm just going to go ahead and do it in a video for my patrons and thank them for supporting me in all my craftiness. So if you're watching this video a little bit closer to Christmas, Merry Christmas, everyone, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.